Good morning, everyone. I'm Holly Coriel, a member of the Board of Trustees of Tahoma Congregation, Tahoma UU Congregation, to be specific. As we begin gathering, I respectfully acknowledge that I speak to you today from the occupied Puyallup ancestral land. I pay respect to elders past and present and extend that respect to the descendants and all indigenous people. We welcome all who are joining us with a longing for community, the hope for peace and who are seeking justice. We are a diverse congregation which encourages each one who comes through our doors to find their own truth and belief. We invite all to join us in a search for meaning and community guided by reason, respect for each other and by love. The wonderful thing about this virtual platform is that we have the opportunity to welcome guests outside our traditional geographical area. In past Sundays, we've had visitors from across the country, even across the ocean to England. So a special welcome to our new friends and our returning friends from near and far away. I invite you to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Links to the video version of the service will be posted there this week, as well as on our website. You can find all of our program announcements this week in our e-news and listed on our church calendar. And here are some highlights for you this week. Following worship service today at noon, our members will have a congregational meeting where we will be seeking consensus on participation in the Tacoma Pierce County Safe Parking Network pilot program. Now, on Tuesday at 10 and Thursday at 3, join Reverend Linda for tea time on Zoom for conversation and connection with others in our community. Those who participated in our last open mic night on Zoom remember what a fun event it was with the folks of all ages sharing music, poetry, and joke telling. We have another all ages open mic night coming up on Friday, February 26, and we're looking forward to seeing what talents you'll share. Be sure to register soon to secure your slot to share your talent. The event will need an audience too, so mark Friday, February 26 at 7 p.m. and join us for an evening of inspiration. Next week on first Tuesday, March 2nd at 5.30 p.m., Doug Taylor will lead Heart and Soul Circle for Contemplation and Connection on Zoom. These Heart and Soul Circles will be the first and third, will be on the first and third Thursdays. Registration is required for each individual session, so register for this program that is limited to a maximum of 12 participants. Okay. For today's service, we welcome our ad hoc committee for building and grand security. And a special welcome to our guest speaker, Jeffrey Boyce, who is a chaplain and missioner for homeless ministries. He is a member of the Episcopal Church and attends St. Andrews in Tacoma. Jeffrey and his wife, Mary, have lived in Tacoma for 12 years. He is in formation for orders and is retired from working on evaluate and treatment facilities, working with people in mental health crises. His interest in the homeless crisis stemmed from having a brother who was homeless in Seattle for the best part of 20 years and says he is open to where the spirit leads him. Again, links for all our programs can be found in the weekly e-news and by events on our church calendar. Thank you for your ongoing financial support to our congregation that makes all of this possible. These programs are staff who create and facilitate the programs and the connections that we make through our congregation. Now, let us prepare to gather together in service. Spirit of life, may our fumbling tongues be blessed so that the chatter becomes prayer and prayer becomes concerted action. May our restless minds be blessed so that insight becomes will and will becomes effective action. May our anxious hearts be blessed so that longing becomes love and love guides our every action. Lighting our chalice today is Rose and Silas Cook who began coming about a year, year and a half ago. 
As Nancy lights the chalice, please join us in the words of the unison reading, which you'll find in your chat. We light this chalice in deep respect for the mystery and holiness of life, in honor and gratitude for those who have gone before, with love and compassion for those who dwell among us, and with hope and faith for the generations to come. Good morning, everyone. My name is Nancy Slocum, and I am the Director of Religious Exploration for Children and Youth here at our congregation. And this is our time for all ages. But before I get into it, let me just put in a plug for the uh, open mic night on Friday. Please go to our calendar and sign up to share your talents with us. I would love to have everyone participating at all ages. It's for all ages. So, you know, Sunday mornings, I have a bit of a ritual here. Um, I set my alarm for what feels to me pretty early. I, I set it for six o'clock. And I get up and I make coffee and I go sit in my favorite chair in the living room with a big comfy chair with a nice ottoman. And I, I, get a, I get a blanket to wrap around me and to snuggle under. And it's quiet in my home. I, I live with my partner, Tom. And right now for the winter, my brother is living with us, my big brother. And so they're still in bed, though, at six in the morning. So I get to have the quiet of a house to myself. And I just love sitting there. Sometimes I'll read a book or I'll, I'll check the news or read my email. Or most likely I'm finishing up figuring out what I'm going to say for the time for all ages here at church. And at some point I'll open the curtains and that'll be my first glimpse of what the weather is like outside. Is it sunny or snowy? raining, hail, windy, whatever. And as I sit there all cozy and comfy, I, I think of how grateful I am for the house where I live. And you know, we moved into this house about six and a half years ago, and I still remember the excitement I felt when I looked on the real estate website and found this house and looked at all the pictures that they had posted of this house. And as I clicked through all the pictures, I, oh, look at the kitchen, isn't that nice? Oh, look at the downstairs TV room. Oh, there's a garage, there's a covered patio. There's the right number of bedrooms and bathrooms for our needs. And I just got more and more excited about it. And I got to admit, I still feel that way about my house. All these years later, I'm so happy to be there. And I'm thankful. To there. This morning, also, I was reflecting on the fact that there's only four more weeks till the vernal or the spring equinox that will turn spring. And with that, I hope there will be lots of flowers and warmer weather. It won't be long. We're moving towards the, the, the lovely part of the year. And it's a time that gets me thinking about one of my favorite activities, which is to go camping. I know kayaking too. Camping is another favorite activity of mine, right? And I find myself itching to get out, to be outside. Sometimes I like to backpack where I pack everything in a pack and hike in a few miles and camp somewhere nice. Or I might find a campground where I can just drive in and set up my camp there. And I love being outdoors. I love getting up and sitting outside to drink my coffee and eat my breakfast. I love going to sleep, listening to the sounds of the forest. Camping in the Pacific Northwest, however, can often mean camping in the rain, right? And, but I find I don't mind getting wet. I just always make sure I have dry clothes that I can change into. And knowing that I have a dry home to return to makes it easy for me to put up with the discomfort of camping in the rain. And sometimes when it comes to it, we will end a camping trip early because the weather conditions are just too miserable. I remember one time my son and a friend of his and I hiked three miles into a place to camp and got there. It was raining really hard and we looked around and said, ah, ah, let's go home and hike back out again. Or one time when I was camping with a group of kids from a school and they all had, everything was wet. And so we packed up a day early and took all the kids and delivered them to their homes. I feel really blessed that I have a beautiful place to live, a place where I can stay warm and dry, a place where I can keep my things, a place to call home. Take a moment, all of you, right now, and look around your home. 
Are you warm and comfortable? I know that there may be some of you today who are not, or who are worried about whether or not you can stay in your home. That's a reality of some people's lives. And for those of you who are, might be facing um, homelessness or the fear that you may become homeless, I encourage you to reach out if you need some support. Let us help you connect, connect with resources. If your thoughts today as you look around your home are about how comfortable you are, you might take a moment to say a word of thanks, of gratitude for this gift in your life. It's this, it's this gratitude that I feel that has drawn me towards supporting programs that help provide housing for people who need shelter. It's such a big need. And I know when I talk to all of you kids, when we talk about people we might provide help to. Many of you mention homeless people, and I think it's because we see people. We see people who are living on our streets. We see people who are, are looking for help, and we want to be able to help them. Many of you have heard me talk about, and maybe even seen slides of trips I've done to other countries with a organization called Habitat for Humanity, where we help to build homes for people in need. I've been to China where I helped to build a home for a man and his son whose house had been uh, damaged in a, a big earthquake. I've been to Guatemala and India where Habitat for Humanity is helping to fund people, people uh, to build homes. I built in Zambia, a country in Africa, and a, a village where houses are made from mud bricks. And, Every year during the rainy season, some of those houses fail. The mud bricks fall apart and the houses break apart. Building homes with solid materials, metal roofs, locking doors is life-changing for these homeowners. And you might remember the slides I showed just a couple of months ago here of the tiny house village in North Tacoma where I volunteered to help them get the village ready for people moving in. Tiny houses aren't their forever homes, but they're a nice, warm, secure place to stay while they're working on finding permanent housing. When I volunteered for Habitat Humanity, I got this t-shirt and I know you can't read it, but what it says is a world where everyone has a decent place to live. I think that's a wonderful goal. And the more I see and the more I learn about the challenges of being without a home, inspires me to keep trying to help meet that goal, a world where everyone has a decent place to live. Having a place to live where we feel safe and secure feels like a basic need, like water and food. A decent place to live. Today, during our service, we have a guest who's speaking about another program that's trying to pe help people who don't have homes some people don't have homes, but they do have a vehicle like a car or maybe a van or a truck. And they can at least stay inside their vehicle as a way to stay out of the weather, as a way to have a door to close, to maybe to lock. It isn't a perfect way to live, but it does provide some shelter while they work to find a more permanent home. One of the issues though is where can they park their vehicles? right? They don't have a driveway or a garage to park in. There are laws about not parking in one spot on city streets for too long. They'll move your car, they'll tow your car away. And some places just aren't safe to park, even when you're inside your car. So our speaker today, he's going to be talking about a program that helps find places that can provide people with a safe place to park, a place where they know they can park every evening and not be bothered where they don't have to search for a place to park every night and where there's a porta potty set up. There's no toilets and cars, right? Porta potty and water for washing. Not having to worry about these things gives them some space, some time, some energy to work on finding a more permanent home. It's a good step in the right direction. You may want to stay and listen to our guest speaker. His name's Jeffrey Boyce talking about this program. It's a pretty cool program. And guess what? Our church has a parking lot with parking spaces, right? It's not used overnight. That's the time when people need to have a place to park. 
Some of the people of our church have been learning about this safe parking program and are they're considering inviting people to use our parking lot for this program. Letting some people who have no other place to be at night, no other place to park. And today the congregation is going to have a Zoom meeting after church to discuss whether or not this is something that they want to do. And I don't know what the outcome of that meeting is going to be. I know that we have people who will make good, thoughtful decisions about it. The congregation will decide what's right for our church. But I love, love, love that people are actively looking for ways that our church community can help to make a difference in the lives of others. And I wanted to make sure that you kids were all aware of that. I think it's important for you to understand how our congregation puts our Unitarian Universalist faith into action. I know if I were to ask you why you come to church on Sundays when we are coming to church, you would tell me, well, because your parents tell you it's time to go to church. But if you were to ask the adults about it, many of them, in addition to talking about hearing, participating in the service, hearing the homily, hearing the, the, the interesting stuff that we talk about in church, many people would say they're looking for community. And looking for community they can work together with, that they can, they, they can help put our values in action. Because here at church, we talk about our principles. We talk about how we want to be kind to everybody. We want to respect everybody. We want to work for fairness and justice, that we respect how we are all connected to one another. And we work together as a community to make a difference in the world. This is an important part of who we are and what we do. Thank you to the congregation for looking at this and thank you to all of you kids for your interest. And I will uh, end our time for all ages with the words we use typically to sing you out of the church, out of our, and head to classes, which is we hold you in our love as you go, as you go. May your heart be at peace as you go to nurture the spark of your precious life. We hold you in our love as you go. Thank you all. Take good care. And now is the time when we come together and remember that this community that means so much to all of us requires us to support it. Please take a moment to go onto our website or to go text to offer your gifts so that we can continue to serve our community and each other in this time of need. <clears throat> and if you could join me in the words on the screen right now, we dedicate ourselves and our offering to the work of this congregation weaving a tapestry of love that we call community, both within and beyond these walls. Good morning, everyone. These words are from Maureen Howard's closing remarks at the January 25th, 2021 Safe Shelter Summit 2, Taking Action. Ms. Howard volunteers with the Tacoma Pierce County Coalition to End Homelessness, has a long history with Habitat for Humanity, and has been ad an advocate for the unhoused for more than 30 years. She is a principal at Marine Howard Consulting, and these are her words. We, the Tacoma Pierce County Coalition to End Homelessness, are sometimes a bit of a ragtag band. Our big tent, our open table, can be chaotic. About the only order we have is our weekly Friday morning meeting agenda and our website. A network of people bound only by our commitment to ending homelessness and to respect each other can make it difficult to know who actually has any authority or how to find your way in. About the only thing predictable about us is that we will do this work as well as we can until we don't have to do it anymore. We are not stopping our Safe Shelter Summit work. We don't know exactly how we're taking it forward, only that we are, 
and that there is more than enough room for each of you to join us. We're using a messy sort of grassroots model where anyone with the time, energy, and passion to take on one of the requests or commitments can serve as the lead of a group of like-minded and diverse people working together. Think of a giant web across the county, some nodes, some requests, some commitments clearer and easier and even stronger than others, some more fragile, some just waiting for the right person, the right moment. Maybe you are that person. Maybe this is the moment. Maybe that giant web is in fact, our beloved community. So now, let us pause for a moment to meditate on Maureen's powerful words. Good morning, everybody. For our uh, reading, we have a poem that was recommended to us by Virginia Lane. It's by Marge Piercy called To Be of Use. You're welcome to read along with us if you like. The people I love best jump into work head first without dallying into the shadows and swim off with sure strokes, almost out of sight. They seem to become natives of that element, the black sleek heads of seals bouncing like half submerged balls. I love people who harness themselves to an ox, to a heavy cart, who pull like the water buffalo with massive patience who strain in the mud and the muck to move things forward, to do what has to be done again and again. I want to be with people who submerge in the task, who go into the fields to harvest and work in a row and pass the bags along. Who stand in the line and haul in their places, who are not parlor generals and field deserters, but move in a common rhythm when the food must come in or the fire be put out. The work of the world is common as mud. Botched, it smears the hands, crumbles to dust. But the thing worth doing well done has a shape that satisfies, clean and evident. Greek amphoras for wine or oil Hopi vases that held corn are put in museums, but you know they were made to be used. The pitcher cries for water to carry and a person for work that is real. And now it is my pleasure to introduce our guest speaker, Jeffrey Boyce, Missioner <clears throat> of Homeless Ministry with the Episcopal Diocese. Several years ago, I was looking for a volunteer position just to fill some of my time. And I met this gentleman at a mobile food bank in a church parking lot where I had been speaking with uh, the rector. And the next week, I was there at the mobile food bank volunteering. I volunteered at two sites, led a team at one of them. And through the interactions with the people coming to the mobile food bank trailer, I was waking up to the number of homeless people that were showing up. I was surprised. And so I talked to uh, the manager of the truck, who is now a friend, and we started putting aside easy open cans and other easy eating foods for the people who were unsheltered. And it dawned on me, it's this walk we do with those who are hungry 
with those who are marginalized, the unsheltered, that brings us closer to God as we follow the path of Jesus. We know that studies have shown that children who don't get regular meals suffer in their ability to learn. And children who are homeless, where getting a good night's sleep is difficult at best, where meals are not regular, they're very inconsistent, it is this life that is steeped in poverty. How is a child able to get a leg up, to get out of poverty? Children need a stable environment in order to thrive. Safe parking can bring that stability. Walking with people who are hungry and with people who are unsheltered, doesn't this fulfill the second greatest law given to us by Jesus? In Matthew 22, Jesus says, love your neighbor as yourself. Anytime we are walking with those who are marginalized in our society, we walk with Christ. We are fulfilling God's second greatest law. The inconvenient truth of poverty in our country is that the numbers are rising. The numbers in homelessness are rising. And there is no easy fix. There is no single easy answer to this problem. However, choosing to walk with people who don't have the advantages that many of us have had is the right thing to do. This is what Jesus did. He chose to hang out with the sinners and the marginalized in his society, healing many people. How many times, walking by people who are unsheltered, do we avert our, our eyes? We should be asking some, uh, ourselves, what does this person need? The last time I did that, just a couple of months ago, they asked for brooms and garbage bags. I provided those items for them. Now I check in with that camp every couple of days and they keep a pretty clean camp. I have a brother who was unsheltered in Seattle on and off for 20 years. And during that time, he worked as a cook, sometimes high-end stuff and other times for caterers doing volume work. And about every two years, everything he had had to be replaced due to theft. A few times, our dad asked me to track him down to pass on messages. He now has now finished a baking school at just as the COVID crisis hit. And he is very fortunate to have the support of the Veterans Administration. While participating in our Bishop's Homeless Task Force, I was asked to speak on a bill in Olympia. This advocacy work has morphed into helping to write portions of the bill to resubmit it. The bill was ESHB 1754, a state law, law that was signed uh, last spring into, uh, into law, spelling out the church's right to perform their ministries on their own or lease property. This bill has also spelled out what a church could do in housing the homeless. Say parking, tiny houses, tent cities, and temporary overnight shelters. The city of Lakewood is adopting the law as their model. There are two safe parking sites in Pierce County that have been set up and are successful. Three sites are in various stages of being completed, including your church. When the point in time counts indicate that about 50% of the unsheltered households are living in cars or some sort of vehicle, trucks, vans, RVs, safe parking is very much needed. Most of the unsheltered that I have talked with 
I have a hard time sleeping at night, mostly because so many unsheltered people are constantly preyed upon by those with dark hearts. A few years back, I was working with Associated Ministries in bringing the faith communities together to work to aid the people who are unsheltered. I still believe that faith communities are in a unique position to offer some of the greatest help to the people experiencing being homeless. This unique position is based on the mandate that Jesus gave us, the two greatest laws. Love God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. When we think about how simple those two, those laws are, even we, the children of God, all of us can grasp these simple rules. There is also faith, hope, and love. Love is the greatest of the three, and we can express the love of God by being present in the lives of those who are homeless, by providing the shelter so that these children of God have a safe place to be, so they can sleep through the night without fear of being hurt, not having to constantly watch their backs. Our faith in God provides a mandate to love our neighbors and provides some hope for those who are unsheltered and providing hope for their future. I want to bring a prayer to you that I use with our homeless task force. It's the Peace Prayer of St. Francis, and I open many meetings with this. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, let me pardon. Where there is doubt, let me sow faith. Where there is despair, let me sow hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console. To be understood as to understand. To be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, and it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. I have been asked, how, how can you immerse yourself in the misery of being homeless? I can, because the mercy of God can be seen in these children of God who are unsheltered, ostracized from our society. The mercy of God comes through us as we touch the lives of those who want and need healing. Amen. So may it be. Thank you, Jeffrey. Thank you for your words, your heart, and your compassion. And now, if you have heard, seen, or read something today that inspires you. We invite you to set an intention to carry that forward into the weeks ahead. Marie Doctorow gives us our closing words in the form of a dialogue between Tanisha, a social justice worker, and her friend Masha, a cybersecurity professional. I know you think the struggle for justice is a corny fantasy, but you live in a world where people have weekends, don't get maimed on the job and have constitutional rights, at least some of the time. You live in a world where I'm not someone's property, where I can vote, where I can marry a woman or a man. That's because sometimes the struggle for justice gets somewhere. Do you know how that happens? Do you have a theory of change? The arc of history is long, but it bends towards justice. You know what makes it bend, Masha? People hauling on that mother with all their strength, 
with all their lives. We pull and pull and pull, and then bit by bit, it bends. People hear Dr. King's quote and they think, oh, well, if the arc of history is going to bend toward justice, then all we have to do is sit back and wait for it. But the truth is it bends because we make it bend. And the instant we let up even a little, it snaps back. And now as Nancy extinguishes our chalice, please join us in the words of the unison reading, which you'll find in your chat. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. And now please join Kat Bielnowski as she leads our closing blessing song. From you I receive, to you I give, together we share, and from this we live. From you I receive, to you I give, together we share, and from this we live. 